Off-target herbicide drift has long been a potential issue in farming. For most common pesticides, proper application technique has been enough to avoid serious problems. But in recent years, off-target herbicides have drifted back into the news cycle. In response to herbicide-resistant weeds, stronger products based on dicamba and 2,4-D have been recommended and used more frequently. Both are many times more toxic to sensitive crops than glyphosate, and both have a notorious history of drift. Drift happens in one of two ways. Direct spray drift is the movement of pesticide dust or droplets through the air. This can happen during or shortly after application. Following product label instructions and paying attention to weather conditions and equipment can usually minimize this kind of drift. But drift from volatilization can be harder to predict and control. It can happen hours or days after application and miles away. Volatilization occurs when pesticide surface residues change from a solid or liquid to a gas or vapor. Once airborne, volatile pesticides can move long distances off-site. Even with new formulations that have lower volatility, dicamba and 2,4-D products are drifting off-site and damaging orchards, vineyards, landscapes, non-dicamba-resistant soybeans, and sensitive specialty crops. The damage was widespread enough to warrant a federal class action lawsuit and tighter restrictions on dicamba use in the states of Arkansas and Missouri. Manufacturers responded with additional applicator training and by adding more warnings and restrictions to the product labels. Part of the new labeling is a reminder of the risk to sensitive crops, like those grown at Herzl Farms in Lucky, Ohio. The dicamba issue coming up and the product being available, we're really concerned about how that's going to affect all the sensitive crop growers. Uh, because our, we're not saying that our crop is more important than the neighbor's crop, it just has a higher value with these sensitive crops and that's where the issue comes in. It can get very costly. It might be easy to miss a small specialty crop farm. Since their crops can be more labor intensive and of higher market value, specialty farms are often smaller operations. But that also means a small amount of herbicide damage can add up to a large loss of revenue. For example, let's look at the market value for an acre of tomatoes versus soybeans. Based on recent averages for Ohio, a soybean field may yield $470 per acre. But the crop from an acre of tomatoes would be closer to an $8,000 value. For many crops, early season damage can be caught in time to replant, but that still incurs extra cost. Whenever we have to replant, uh, if it's done early and we have to replant that section, we can get into a cost of about $400 to $450 an acre just for the plants and seed. And then there's another probably $80 to $90 cost per acre of, of the uh, labor issue to the, to the grower itself. But herbicide damage can show up too late for a replant, and sometimes damage isn't noticed until fruit maturation. For organic growers, the stakes are even higher. As a company, we have a zero tolerance for dicamba in the, in the processed fruit itself. So uh, when we get that, or if we get a batch that, that does test positive, uh, that grower can throw away that, that entire field. Organic growers have a three-year certification process to go through. Off-target drift could make them fail to deliver on growing contracts, or in some cases, even get them in trouble with their certification inspector. Grapes are another growing sector of Ohio agriculture affected by 2,4-D and dicamba drift. Like organic growers, grape growers have a fallow startup period. Uh, when you first get started, uh, basically we figure about $8,000 an acre to establish plants. And as those plants age, they produce better grapes. Um, young plants, yeah, it takes a few years before you really get the so-called greenness out of them. Grape growers can lose fruit from herbicide damage, or in severe cases, entire vines. For grapes and other horticultural crops, herbicide damage can result in slow or uneven ripening, which makes harvesting difficult. Losses for grape growers depend on the severity of damage, the variety of grape, 
and whether the grower is selling them or using them for in-house winemaking. But depending on these factors, losses can reach $30,000 or more per acre. As Ohio agriculture becomes more diverse, it's important for all growers to know who their neighbors are. There are ways for growers of organic or other sensitive crops to make their presence known. About four years ago, uh, Purdue produced a product called, or a website called Driftwatch, which is called Fieldwatch today. They record and document all their fields and also put in uh, a sign in their field that says, please do not drift, that you can purchase through uh, Ohio ODA. And, and uh, just to remind growers that yes, this crop is here as, as custom applicators are driving by, they see that crop and it's just in their mind, hey, that's right, two miles away, we got a field on our northwest side and we got northwest wind today, maybe we shouldn't be spraying that field. Custom applicator Scott Dawson explains that while the specialty crop registry is important, it's also imperfect. We also find that there, there's a lot of Amish clientele in our neighborhood that are not on the registry and uh, it, we come upon places that aren't, aren't using it and uh, have that, that's an issue for us. Manufacturers have vowed to continue improving these herbicides while researchers examine strategies to slow down the problem of herbicide resistance in weeds. But most important is to know your neighbors and to treat their fields and their businesses with respect. We're all part of the same vital industry.